Hello, everyone, and welcome to another fascinating episode of Elevating Your Life. I am just so thrilled to share our guest today. Oh, my gosh. We have with us today, Danny Carroll. He is the author of the best-selling book, Terminal Cancer is a Misdiagnosis. Discover a palliative care alternative medicine you can survive based off the findings of Dr. Reiki Geard Hammer. Danny spent the first half of his life in London, UK, and completed his education with a master's degree from the London School of Economics. He later moved to India, where he now lives and works. Danny has spent the last 17 years studying alternative healing therapies in search of the holy grail of health and wellness. Following a cathartic, healing experience in 2012, he has focused on mind-body healing protocols for the last 10 years. He discovered a new body of medical knowledge called Germanic Healing Knowledge, GHK, or Germanic New Medicine, GNM, developed by a German medical doctor, Reiki Hammer. Danny has spent the last seven years using this practice to help people with chronic and terminal health conditions. Oh my gosh, Danny, welcome, welcome <laughs> to the show. Good morning, Paula. It's really nice to be here. Thank you for hosting me. I'm just so grateful. I am just thrilled to have you. Well, would you like to share a little more of your background with us and kind of what triggered you to write this great book? Yeah, so... As you, as you mentioned in the introduction, I live in India. I live in Bombay. Um, I moved to India in uh, the beginning of 1996 on a six-month posting, and uh, basically I'm still there. Um, uh, in the mid-2000s, I had a colleague in India who was given a diagnosis of stage three. I don't remember exactly what, but uh, she couldn't afford the cancer treatment. And in India, if you don't have insurance and you can't afford the cancer treatment, then you're just sent home and there's nothing can be done. So I ran, a, I ran a, a marathon in Bombay and I raised a lot of money for her cancer treatment. And she was delighted. Um, when she went into hospital, I mean, she looked in full health and perfectly fine to me. Um, so she started chemotherapy treatments. And she used to message me from hospital saying, Danny, I, I don't know what these doctors are doing, but it feels like they're putting poison in my veins. And at the time, I didn't know any better. So I encouraged her to, to take the, the treatments. And after three rounds of chemo, she died. Um, I was devastated. I both funded the treatment and ensured her compliance to the treatment. Um, so it really, uh, it really, it was really quite a traumatic experience for me. Um, so I swore I was, at the time I was my early to mid thirties. Um, I was working in management and finance. I had no background in medicine, either conventional or alternative. And I said to myself, okay, I'm going to go and find the cure for cancer. I'm gonna find a better solution to this problem. Um, and off I went and I spent uh, I spent about seven years studying everything that moved, uh, everything that looked like a promise to, to cancer, whether it was nutritional healing. Uh, if you go online, you'll find a, a TED presentation I did in 2010 on um, nutritional healing. Um, if uh, And then I studied spiritual healing and energy healing and emotional healing i studied about flower remedies for for many years um but it wasn't until 2012 i had a i had a strange cathartic healing experience in 2012 where i had my entire body was riddled with golf ball sized knots i mean you could see them in my muscles in my calf muscles my thighs my arms my back and I, I was in physio, um, the physio would iron out these knots and leave huge bruises on my muscles. They basically, when they iron them out, they iron them out with their elbows. Like this. Excruciating, painful. Um, and I go back two days later and they came back again. Um, 
I was facing a very interesting challenge in my life at that point. Um, I was dating an American diplomat um, who'd been posted to Bombay for, for two years. And we agree, our next posting was going to be in Santiago de Chile. So we, uh, we agreed that when she left, we would terminate our relationship. Um, and it was getting close to the point where she was leaving. Um, so the, the, the weekend before she was leaving, uh, we had a problem because we'd become soulmates and we couldn't terminate the relationship. So we were doomed to this ridiculous long distance relationship between South America and South Asia, which is frankly ridiculous. Um, and what happened is on the Friday evening, we agreed that we would not terminate the relationship. And when I woke up on a Saturday morning, the, the knots that had riddled my body um, for the previous six months just disappeared magically, just like poof, gone. And, and it blew me away. So I had a, I had a, I had a, uh, an intuitive uh, belief that if my mind could, I mean, the only difference between Friday night and Saturday morning was the fact that my girlfriend and I had agreed not to terminate our relationship. Um, so uh, basically, I was planning to, I thought there was some similar connection with, with cancer in the mind, and I was planning to, to do a PhD to study the mind body connection and i was looking for a university that had both a medical specialization and a psychology specialization and um in the process of looking for this university i, I found this uh, this german medical doctor who's reported to have a 92 percent success rate healing terminally or cancer patients using a form of mind body medicine um, and that's where i started and that's where i found this extraordinary body of medical discoveries that I've spent the last 10 years testing um, initially on myself and then um, on others um, in order to help them to fully recover their health and it's truly extraordinary. Fascinated and fascinated. Yeah. So can you tell us so what exactly is the mind-body healing through Germanic healing? What is Germanic healing? Um, so the, the name of the medical science, uh, initially, uh, Dr. Hammer called the medical discoveries new medicine, and his thought process at the time was old medicine and new medicine, and this was going to be the new medicine. Um, he found out he couldn't he couldn't um, get any intellectual property on the words new medicine, so he had it, he added the word Germanic, which is where we got Germanic new medicine. Um, because he's German and it's a particular it's a particular part of the, of the historic German culture that they call Germanish in German and uh, Germanic in English. Um, but then he, uh, as he progressed through his life, he realized that this is actually not medicine at all. There is no medicine, right? This is this is understanding the way we're biologically wired, what causes problems in life, and what you need to do to fix those problems um you know by addressing challenges that you're facing in life so then in i think about 2008 and 9 dr hammer then changed it to germanic healing knowledge um which in german is actually called germanische heilkund um which is the germanic healing knowledge is the closest translation into english so that's how the name progressed because there is no medicine right i mean it is essentially a, it is essentially a, a body of knowledge on how to learn to heal yourself essentially without medicine. Yes, yes. <clears throat> so for someone reading your book, what what are they going to discover? Uh, will they discover the steps they can take in their rethinking their health and rebuilding and changing? So th this 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 book, Paula, is um is an these medical discoveries essentially have been swept under the carpet and suppressed for the last 45 years. Um, Dr. Hummer spent two and a half years in prison. Um, he had 12 attempts on his life and they tried to put him in a mental institution 75 times. In, in his estimation, when these medical discoveries are allowed to surface, um, 95% of all of today's treatment protocols, both conventional and alternative, will uh, essentially uh, become obsolete. Um, if you can learn to heal yourself, um, then you essentially you don't, need a, you don't need a medical system, right? So 
This book is designed to introduce you to those medical discoveries. Um, it's the first book of a 500 plus book series that I'm planning to write. I'm, I'm writing one book on each disease. Um, so each one is like a little reader's digest. So what this book does is it introduces you to Dr. Hummer. It takes you on a journey that I've been on over the last 17 years. And the fundamental discovery that, uh, that Dr. Hummer concluded after 39 years of, he was a cancer research specialist, um, after 39 years of, of, uh, of cancer research and biological research with over 50,000 cancer patients, where essentially he concluded that cancer is a, is a survival biological program, that nature never goes wrong, that nature knows what it's doing, it never makes mistakes, um, the only problem is we don't understand how nature functions. So what this book does is it introduces you to that entire concept of cancer being a survival biological program. And then there's going to be following that one book on each disease. Um, I've currently written one book on breast cancer, uh, one on testicular cancer, uh, one on IBS and ulcerative colitis, and one on atopic dermatitis. And once I've finished the essentially the the, the launch process of uh, terminal cancers and misdiagnosis from sort of September onwards, I'll then be writing one book a month on on each disease, so that uh, once you understand, you get introduced to the body of knowledge via this book, and then you can come down and drill down into your specific problem. I got breast cancer, so then you go and read the breast cancer book, or I've got IBS or ulcerative colitis or colon cancer so you can come and read that book so you can learn how to specifically solve that problem that's yeah. the plan <clears throat> yes and i was fascinated when i read that a 1991 trial revealed an astonishing fact after undergoing treatment with dr hammer for over five years an impressive 92 percent mm -hmm. of 6,500 patients diagnosed with predominantly terminal cancer were still alive. And in full health. Oh. So, but Paula, the, the prosecution called up each of those people individually as part of Dr. Hammer's. Dr. Hammer was being, because they took, in I think in 86, they took away his medical license um, and he was being prosecuted for practicing medicine without a license. Okay. So the prosecution subpoenaed all of his patient files called them up, discovered that over 6,000 weren't only alive. I mean, they picked up the telephone, right? <laughs> so, um, but they're actually in full health, right? So Dr. Hummer, I think, in that particular in that particular trial was then, uh, so the prosecution had to admit that 92% were alive and in full health. So in that particular trial, he was then put in prison, I think, for 21 months, of which I think he served about 12 months for having a 92% success rate in healing terminally all cancer patients. Can you imagine? <laughs> yes. Crazy. Mad. It is, it is because so much is money oriented out there. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a strategic threat to the system, right? So, but it, it, the, the way his, 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 his start on his journey is fascinating. Not, not fascinating, but um, in 1978, his 19 year old son was shot and murdered. Okay. And two months after his son was shot and murdered, he was diagnosed with an aggressive form of testicular cancer with metastasis to the stomach. He was given a 1% chance to survive, of which he survived because he, he had surgery, he had a testicle removed, and he had part of his stomach removed, but he didn't have chemotherapy or radiation, which I, I believe that the vast majority of doctors choose not to um so basically uh, uh when he recovered his health at that point he was the cancer research head of um of a gynecological oncology unit related to munich university in germany and um he was working with 200 confirmed late stage female cancer patients and he started interviewing them to find out whether they'd gone for a similar life crisis to him before they got cancer and out of 200 200 had okay now when he started putting them into separate categories of women with ovarian cancer or women with cervical cancer or mammary gland or introductory breast cancer what he observed is that the women in the same category had all suffered from 
the same type of trauma. So the women with ovarian cancer, for example, would all suffered from some form of profound loss. And the women with mammary gland breast cancer had all suffered from some form of nest or care conflict within the home. And the women with introductory breast cancer had all suffered from some form of um, separate, brutal separation conflict where essentially what a loved one was torn from their breast um, and then he started seeing the patterns of these particular type of life crises and how they affect us biologically. And what he, so in his case, his son was shot and murdered. He couldn't help thinking that there must be a causal link because he got cancer on a reproductive organ. Okay. So fast forward 39 years of research with over 50,000 cancer patients later. And what he understood is that the tumor that he got on his testicle was actually functional tissue designed to increase his testosterone and sperm production so that he had a greater capacity to get his wife pregnant so he could essentially replace the child he just lost. Okay, so what nature has done is increased his capacity to be able to solve a life crisis. And if, in fact, if he had known at the time, and he didn't, because he was a traditional trained medical doctor, if he'd have got his wife pregnant, then basically that biological program would have achieved its purpose and it would have been switched off, bang, just like a light switch. And then the extra capacity that was added to his testicle would have just been removed and taken away. So capacity is increased, capacity is reduced. And it's no different to driving down driving down uh, the road and basically seeing a, a, a danger on the highway ahead of you and putting your foot on the brake or the accelerator in order to avoid that danger. And basically, this is what cancer is. And once he understood this fundamental connection and mechanism, he essentially unraveled the biological code and he found the solutions to every every form of cancer uh, everything, multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's disease, osteoporosis, autism, Down syndrome, everything. Um, and uh, the body of work, Paula, is absolutely mind-blowing and truly extraordinary. Oh, that is so amazing. Oh, my gosh. And yeah. what you just... It still gives me goosebumps. <laughs> yes, on the breast cancer, that... Uh, what you described was exactly what a dear friend of mine was going through who's passed from breast cancer. So, yeah, I mean, that is, I mean, if you look at if you look at mammary gland breast cancer, for example, say a, a mother's walking along the street uh, with a five year old child talking to a friend and, the and she's not paying attention. The child pulls away from the mother, runs into the road and gets hit by a car and ends up in ICU. OK, now the biological purpose of the mammary gland is to lactate is a nursing instrument. OK, so if a child's five years old, the mother will no longer be nursing. So the, the mammary glands will dry up. So what nature does is it reactivates the mammary gland so that the mother can essentially offer the breast to the child to nurse them back to health again. And once the child gets back to full health again, that those, those mammary glands will be switched off and it will go back and revert to its to its normal capacity in the same way that the testicle grows in order to increase fertility to, to be able to replace the child that was lost. But in today's treatment, you know, we call that that reactivation of the mammary gland. We, we call that uh, a globular or a mammary carcinoma. And then we remove the woman's breasts and put them on chemo and do all sorts of crazy stuff. Right. But what we don't realize is that um, that the that these are just the symptoms of the problem? The tumor on the testicle or the breast being reactivated is the symptom or the outcome. And what I've done over the last seventeen years is applied the same standard of problem solving we use in business to to apply it to health. So in business, we have a simple rule that you can never solve a problem by addressing the cause of the, uh, the symptom of the problem. You can only ever solve a problem by addressing the cause of the problem. If you address the symptom of the problem, you'd be addressing it for the rest of your life, okay? Now, so in business, we always try and find the cause. In health, we don't. 
the tumor on Dr. Hammer's testicle basically was the symptom, right? The cause of the problem was his son being murdered, okay? Or in the mother's case, the cause of the problem is the child, the child getting hit by a car and ending up in ICU. So unless you address the cause of the problem, what the mother should do in that situation is offer a breast to the sick child, nurse the child back to health again, which is basically nature's design. And once the child is healthy again, that problem will be solved and nature will naturally switch that program off. And then the extra capacity that was added so that she can nurse the child will be taken away and removed and everything will go back to normal again. Oh, my gosh. If you remove the breast, Paula, it does nothing, right? There's this yeah. concept called recurrent breast cancer where you get breast cancer on a breast that's been removed because it doesn't matter if you if you remove the organ because the organ is the symptom. The, yeah. problem, the problem is the life crisis and it's processed in the brain, okay? If you want to solve any problem by addressing, uh, addressing it at the organ level, the only real um, option available to you is to essentially to cut your head off, right? And that's really not ideal. I do not recommend that. I mean, it, you look at you look at um, you look at uh, in medicine. We have this concept called phantom limb pain. Okay, I go in, I have a problem, I have my leg amputated, and I still feel pain in the limb after it's been amputated. Yes. Okay. Now. Why? How is that possible? The limb's no longer there. How can I feel pain in a limb that's no longer there? And basically, the answer to the question is the pain is not in the limb. The pain is in the brain. So the only way you can solve the pain in the limb is by chopping your head off, and that's really not a good thing to do. But chopping the limb off makes no difference. It doesn't matter whether you remove the organ, if you have ulcerative colitis. It doesn't matter if you remove your colon. You will still feel the pain in the colon, even when it's not there because the pain program runs in your brain. You can only ever solve health problems by addressing the cause of the problem. And this is what this doctor has done, which is quite extraordinary. This is fantastic. Yeah, let the mind-body healing, you know, do that healing. That is fascinating. I'm a Reiki practitioner, and I had a gentleman come to me once who had lost an arm from a motorcycle accident and still mm -hmm. had pain. Uh-huh. Yep. Still suffering in so much pain. Yep. So, Even though the arm is not there, right? Yeah. Yeah. You're right. It's coming from the brain. So mm -hmm. that is just so fascinating to understand that that we can heal that through our brain. Oh. This so is even, uh, if you if you have breast cancer, having a having a mastectomy does nothing makes no difference whatsoever if, if you have ulcerated colitis having your colon removed has no effect on the process you still feel colon cramps after the colon has been removed man oh i just i just can't wait to learn more and more about <clears> this <throat> this is so fantastic so here, here's here's where it here's in my mind where it all sort of went wrong um, doc, so we all know that conventional medicine is a system of symptomatic treatment. Everybody knows that, right? Mm -hmm. But I don't know why we do not you know, we do not apply the same standard of problem solving in health that we do in business. Okay, in business we know that you can never solve a problem by addressing the symptom. Okay, so my, the title of my book, Terminal Cancer is a Misdiagnosis, applies in every single situation because. The medical system, whether it's conventional or alternative, Paula, okay, is still a system of symptomatic treatment. And you cannot come to a conclusion that you can. If somebody was in my business and they came to me and said, Danny, I can't solve the problem. And they explained to me they've only been addressing the symptom. Okay. I would, I would say, go back and find the cause of the problem and solve it. Don't be so <laughs> stupid. OK, but in health, we don't do that. Right. We say, OK, I have given you this treatment, that treatment, chemo, surgery, everything, radiation, 15 types of medication. It keeps coming back. Yes, that's right, because you're addressing the symptom of the problem, not the cause of the problem. So when you conclude you cannot solve a problem by addressing the symptom of the problem, then that's, that, that, that doesn't count because you haven't attempted to address the cause of the problem. Until you address the cause of the problem, you can never solve it in any walk of life, business, health, anything. Yes. Oh, Danny, this, wow. 
Uh, we have about a minute or two left. Please share your website and what last message you want to give us. This is so fantastic. I could I could talk to you for an hour. <laughs> we can do more, Paula. It's fine. <laughs> I can more. I can do like a thousand calls with you if you like. Yes. Um, my uh, my home website is danny-carroll.com. Uh, that's the Irish spelling, C A R R O W L. Um, you'll find um, you'll find there are currently four other books on there on IBS, testicular cancer, um, atopic dermatitis, and breast cancer. All of those books can be read for free. They're on um, they're on a tab called the Healing Tribune. I'm building a new media property called the Healing Tribune, and the tagline is the cause of disease made simple. Over time, there will be 500 plus books on there, one book on every disease, and they'll all be free to read on my website. Oh, Annie, thank you so much. You, you are a gift for us. Thank you so much. This is... I'm just passing on Do Dr. Hummer's the hero here, right? I'm just merely, I'm merely the messenger. Um, so, you know, no need to apportion any credit to me. Uh, Dr. Hummer is the is the hero of this story. The greatest medical doc, the greatest medical mind to ever be put on this planet and spent his life being persecuted for his genius, which is a, an atrocity in itself. Right. So um, my uh, all, all of my efforts are done in the memory. Of Dr. Hummer, he was truly an extraordinary man. Oh, Danny, thank you so much. I really think we need to get together again. Let's do it, Paula. Come on. Let's do it. Oh let's my God. Let's do it. <laughs> let's have some. Let's have some fun. I am the world and teaching people how to heal themselves, Paula. Come yes. on, we can do it. We can do it. All we right. It. I am excited for that. Oh. Pick uh, your subject, and we can talk about it. Yes. Anything. You want to do autism? Um, you want to do cancer? You want to do? Parkinson's disease, you, well, my MS, you pick your subject and we can do a, Annie, we, so we, can, we can do a, oh, an entire know. session on it. Oh, everyone, thank you for joining us. Love, hugs and blessings, Danny.